January 1986, coup d'etat in Kampala. Museveni seizes power. In the north of the country, rebellion is growing and takes to arms. It is the start of a civil war between government forces and the rebels of Joseph Kony Lord's resistance army that will last for more than 20 years. A devastating toll on human lives. 100,000 civilians killed, one and a half million displaced persons crammed into camps, 25,000 children coerced into joining the LRA ranks. Eight years after the end of hostilities, the horrors of war are still indelibly engraved in the common memory. Karmati kam, kwa ma no tek. Ene nek magi perka nek dano. Adwi donyo nek dano. Ma an gi nek la mera, la tipa la mera. Ki wa wi e ot. When you try to escape, you are sued by gun and others, people who try to care escaped, have ducted and cut them with the panga and picked them through in the fire because all over the camp were put on fire. Me, myself, I lost my dear children and uh, my brother, three of them, that is the loved one. My daughter of 10 years was abducted. My brother, who was a teacher in a secondary school, was also abducted. People are still calling me the father of the rebel because I'm still missing my people. Kayen ki mari ki teri ki la wor ma kara ne fami la jel ki ma ware yo. Do gang ma cha cha ki o ko no ki mi ngar ma nyo gwang ngar no tai mo lui. Chi ki mi ni na ko ro be ri yen be ki di na ko la wor e. E ra ka dong i du gu gang wa cha ne ki la nyo ri pa ngar na ne ana ya na ko ngari. Aka enam ayo umah umah, umegi na oke enam ayo umah o, wanu umah o wana ngwe. Aka ngarki elum kebun ne koko iye kuno. Yoke ni po dogo, ena ana dogo ana tike na. Ame monu beru bina trek, ame mu tuye ku ame. Kae apo iye yunga chen miu wit pe beru tica ber kuali shamor. How to move on from these crimes and atrocities? How can the expectations of victims seeking truth and compensation be met? In Uganda, these questions are still being fiercely debated. In 2008, three years after five arrest warrants were issued by the International Crime Court in The Hague, the Ugandan government created the International Crime Division. Its mandate was clear, to prosecute those guilty of international crimes, but this time to do it in Uganda. Would this put an end to impunity and bring justice and accountability? The creation of the crime division raised many hopes, hopes soon to be dashed. Why? Because of an amnesty law voted in 2000, which has since pardoned some 26,000 combatants, including those responsible for the most serious crimes. There are those who committed serious crimes, which deserve to give accountability. But now, the amnesty law has not segregated anybody. The, the amnesty was made blanket without minding about uh, the serious nature of crimes. So in a way, amnesty is seen as a way of blocking or denying victims who need justice. What I think about these people who did these atrocities, the government should take these people to the court of Uganda because we want them to say we are the people who did this. They participated highly to abduct our relatives forcefully. So there's no way for them to be given amnesty. If they are to be prosecuted, they will not repeat it again. amnesty <laughs> The law is saying those who have been given amnesty is because they were fighting against the government. So which means it was like treason. So that particular group feels that it means they have been betrayed for good because they have entered into the, that, that system of government describing them that as rebel per se, flat. 
So yet they feel they are children. They were abducted. They are also victims. There are gaps in amnesties. There are gaps in reconciliation. There are gaps in the various mechanisms. For instance, if you look at the amnesty, if, if a person comes back from captivity and is reintegrated into the community, but there's no element of truth-telling, you'll find that forgiveness cannot happen. And that's why, if you went to villages, you find some people are still bitter. In Acholi, we have what we call matter or put. Or put is kind of a bitter hub where the two warring parties come together, you know, they, they, they reconcile, they accept the truth, they tell what happened, and then they drink this bitter herbs. And this bitter herb is believed to take away the, you know, the bitterness. When, once it is done, the people have to believe in it, they trust it because it's their tradition. So we see the traditional aspect complementing the work of amnesty in application at the grassroots level. We saw a few uh, reconciliation processes conducted, but that's like a drop in the sea because people who came back from Kaltiva in thousands. 14 years of amnesty, during which Uganda has clearly given priority to a return of peace and stability, a priority supported by some of the population. 14 years of impunity too, for the perpetrators of war crimes and crimes against humanity within the LRA and government forces. And as many years of waiting for the victims who still suffer both physically and psychologically from the effects of these crimes. There is a ray of hope, however. A policy for transitional justice is under discussion. It would establish conditional amnesty, legal proceedings for the most serious cases, compensation for victims, truth and reconciliation. An ambitious and comprehensive arsenal. Has the time finally come to break the cycle of violence and impunity in Uganda? In the case of Uganda, it cannot be under overemphasized that it is the appropriate timing for justice. The guns have been silent for a number of years now. Uh, those who are living in internally displaced camps have gone back to their respective homes, and increasingly, many of them are demanding for justice. The person who come and tell me I'm the one who killed your, uh, your, your child, I would forgive him. The, if the government also to put in place that we fail to manage to, to cater for you by the time you were in the camp, that you can feel comfortable. The way amnesty was discussed, the law developed, it left out victim completely. Absolutely, to have our complete amnesties, okay. This amnesty, so let's go and do what we want. We create a cycle of impunity. What message are we sending to society? Well, I think I'll tell you, Ghana, we've been okay, you're made of the power. When the process of the justice is going, also the process of compensation would be in place. That is what we want. You cannot have peace without justice, it will not be sustainable.